let's go ahead and talk about the idea that complex power s is equal to v RMS, because most of the time you are going to be dealing with RMS values, times i RMS conjugate. So this is what we actually learned from the last section. Um, let me go ahead and change colors here. But recall that the following is true. V RMS is equal to the current I RMS times whatever impedance you're flowing through. So typically you're trying to find po complex power across an element. So, so there's some impedance here, which is a complex number. So V is equal to I Z. That's something we've been using all the time here. So then when we substitute that in, what we will get is uh, S is equal to for VRMS, we'll just stick this in, IRMS times the impedance Z, uh, and then it'll be multiplied by uh, IRMS conjugate. All we did is take this guy and stick it into uh, what VRMS is actually equal to, if we're talking about a specific circuit element. So at the end of the day, the complex power is going to be IRMS times IRMS conjugate times Z. Now, how do we simplify this further? You have a complex number uh, or a phaser um, called IRMS, and you're multiplying by the same exact thing but the conjugate form of it. And how do you simplify that? If you go back uh, to algebra, actually, I guess this is probably past algebra, whatever trig, whatever class you learn this stuff, if you have any complex number and you multiply it times its conjugate, a really interesting thing happens. You always get the magnitude of that complex number squared. That's what you actually get. You get a number back. You, 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 when you take a, a complex number and multiply by a complex number, you get a real number back. This is the magnitude, the length of that complex number squared. And the reason it comes back that way is because of the following. If you have a complex number A plus JB, right? I'm just going to kind of give you a little refresher. An A minus JB, okay? This guy is the complex number A. This is the complex number A, but conjugated. All it means is you stick a negative sign in front of all of the J's that you see everywhere. Then what happens? You just do FOIL here. So A times A is A squared, right? And then you have these inside terms and the outside terms that you have to have in there. So you have plus uh, JAB and you have minus JAB because the inside and the outside terms. And then the last terms that you have is going to be um, what you have here is you have a negative times a negative, that's a, that's a, ne a negative times positive, that's negative, but then j times j is also negative 1, so that those cancel out, so you end up with a positive b squared here. So again, the j times j at the end is j squared, which is negative 1, which cancels with the negative that you would get from the signs right there. So what ends up happening is these cancel away, and you have a squared plus b squared, which is just the magnitude of the complex number squared. In other words, if you look at that triangle here, right, so this is A and this is B. This is the real and imag this is the real and imaginary part here. Um, then basically this is the magnitude of A squared because it's like a Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared should be the length of this side squared. So when we multiply times the conjugate, we end up getting A squared plus B squared. We end up getting the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared, which is the length of the other side squared. So all of that stuff in our back pocket. Now when we look over here, we have this current multiplied by its conjugate, and so basically what you end up with is the magnitude of IRMS squared times Z. And don't let me uh, let you forget that when you calculate complex power, it's just P plus JQ. I'm just writing this down to remind you what it is. But effectively, this is really, really, really cool because basically what it's telling you is that if you have any circuit component, any circuit component at all, capacitor, inductor, or resistor, because Z could be any circuit component, right? Or it could be the combination of capacitor, inductor, and resistor. And you know the current flowing through that then all you do is you take the phaser, the RMS formulation, the phaser of that guy, take its magnitude, then square it, then multiply by this, and you're going to get the complex power back. And this, ladies and gentlemen, looks like, from DC analysis, P is equal to I squared R. Remember that? I squared R. That's the calculation of a power through a resistor. So here in the AC term, uh, uh, terminology, it's magnitude of the current squared times the impedance Z. That's going to give you the complex power, whereas this was a subset. This is giving you the real power. It's only giving you the real version of it. This can be used for anything, resistors, capacitors, or inductors. If it's a resistor you're talking about, you're going to end up getting the same answer that you would have gotten uh, if you had just calculated it using the uh, 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 
older method down there. So you, but you need to formulate it using the RMS value. That's really important because RMS value, we've already talked about how that delivers the same amount of energy per unit time as the DC version. Square it times the impedance. So this is so important. We're going to circle this. This is one of those things that are really, 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 really important here, the punchline, so to speak. And then we're going to find out that something very similar is going to happen here in just a second when I formulate the next guy. So recall okay, that uh, S is V RMS times I RMS conjugate. This is exactly the same thing we set up here. I'm just rewriting it down here because I'm starting like a new little derivation. Um, and don't forget that I RMS is V RMS over Z. So this is I is equal to V over R. This is like Ohm's law, right? Just like uh, this is Ohm's law right here. This is Ohm's law reformulated in terms of I. Okay, so now we're going to stick this guy. We're going to stick it into there and see what we end up with. S is equal to VRMS, and I'll open the parentheses and I'll stick this in here, VRMS over Z, uh, and the whole thing is conjugated, right? Because don't forget, the conjugate is on the current. We're saying the current's equal to this stuff, so this whole quantity is conjugated. All right, so let's simplify this. So we'll have VRMS uh, times, and then over here we'll have VRMS conjugate over Z conjugate. It turns out that whenever you have complex numbers like this and, and you're dividing them, the conjugation goes and applies to the top. It also applies to the bottom. So that's why we have two asterisks there now, but I dropped the parentheses. But notice what we have. We have VRMS times VRMS conjugate. And we just said that when you have a complex number times its conjugate, you get the magnitude squared of that guy. So what we have on the top is magnitude VRMS squared over Z conjugate. And don't forget, we're calculating complex power. This is just P plus JQ. This is incredibly uh, important. Okay, because this looks like uh, P is equal to V squared over R for the, for the uh, DC case. If you know the voltage across the resistor, you square it, you divide by R, you get the power. That's in watts. Here we're saying if you know the, volt, the voltage phasor across any circuit element, resistor, inductor, or capacitor, you just take its magnitude, square it, just like V squared here, but you have to do the RMS value, magnitude, square it, and you divide not by Z, but by Z conjugate. So you have to take the impedance that you're talking about, you take the conjugate of that guy, um, and, um, and you divide by that conjugate, and then you're going to get the complex power S. So you see, now we're back full circle where I told you that I wanted you to be. We're now going to be able to use these equations which are very, very, very similar to the equations we first used in circuit analysis for power calculations, but we have to use the complex versions of everything, and we have to know what everything means, P and J, Q. I could have started everything a long time ago and just gave you these formulas, but then you wouldn't know what P was and what Q was, and you wouldn't know what RMS was. You wouldn't know what the conjugate meant, and then you would just be lost if I just gave you these guys and said, use them. So we had to take this journey and talk about instantaneous power, and talk about average real power, and talk about reactive power, and talk about RMS, so that we can finally get to the culmination of what we what we have now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift this up to page, and this is really the takeaway of everything that we've taught in this lesson up until now. So power calculations. These are pretty much what you're going to use almost all the time. Almost. Not all the time, but almost all the time. All right. So complex power S can be VRMS times IRMS conjugate. Okay? That's, that's one way to do it. If you know the voltage and the current across some element, you do it like that. Or you can write it as S is equal to magnitude I RMS squared times Z. So that's like I squared R from the early days. Or you can write it as S is equal to magnitude V RMS squared over Z conjugate. So here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This looks like P is equal to IV. This looks like I squared R. And this looks like V squared over R. You just have to be a little bit careful the way you handle it because you have phasor quantities and you have conjugates running around occasionally. But at the end of the day, no matter which way that you use to calculate this, it's just going to be P plus JQ.
Q. So however you get the answer, you just go to rectangular form and you'll read the real part off and you'll read the imaginary part off and you'll know the real and reactive power right there. So now we have everything in place to go and start solving some problems. And I promise you we will do that in the next section. So follow me on there and we'll start solving some problems and you'll see how all of this is pretty simple once we've got the theory out of the way to actually use it to solve problems. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.